This time, question was based on a small video and an MRI. First, uh, we'll see the video. उल्लंघन <laughs> 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 निवर्ती small muscle wasting and claw hand it's more prominent on the left side but right side is not spared right side also is involved so how to evaluate a case like this within 10 minutes first thing is to see whether the small muscle wasting is unilateral or bilateral so ask the both hands to be shown like this and this in this case left side is bilateral significantly wasted right side also is wasted there is a involvement of the interosseal and there is a claw hand so first point is to see the distribution of this peripheral wasting the asymmetry on this side is helpful because that helps rule out a muscle disorder and a mineral junction disorder because it will be symmetric a unilaterality or more on one side rules out muscle and mineral junction disorder you may ask back muscle disorders will always produce a proximal weakness but there are muscle disorders producing a predominant distal weakness that is tenor myotonic dystrophy is one muscle disorder which will produce a similar picture distal weakness so here that is ruled out so it's a neuropathy next question is whether it is involving the upper limb hands only or whether there is an involvement of the foot also because it's a disorder generalized so most of us know different types of peripheral neuropathies motor motor plus sensory so dying back neuropathies bilateral symmetrical both upper and lower limbs will be involved where the longest nerve will be involved earlier that means the involvement of both foot will be the first thing involved then only the hands so most important evaluation of this is by the gait and seeing the foot see the gait if there is a high step gait foot drop usually bilateral it is some of the peripheral neuropathies if that is spared the gait is normal and the foot there is no wasting that means it's a problem of the upper limb only not a peripheral neuropathy as such second thing if it is a bilateral symmetrical upper hands only lower limbs are spared that is helpful because there are three levels in which uh, this weakness can happen cat1 level and the horn cell then radicals brachial plexus then the peripheral nerves when the peripheral nerves the concern this is motor ulnar and uh, median where is the problem if it is an anterior horn cell it's inside the parenchyma most of the parenchymal lesions it will be bilateral both upper limb 
So of course it's possible. There are antifon cell lesions producing one side only. But most of the acquired problems are bilateral. If it is a unilateral, think about the radical backer plexus and the peripheral nerves. In this case, both hands are involved, more on one side, that's all. Wasting is the bilateral. So it can be a possibility of the parenchymal, but can't be 100% sure because there can be the both sides uh, nervous can be involved in some of the conditions of the uh, upper limb only. But the evaluation is next thing is the sensory and the power evaluation. Power, what is the involvement? You know the description, the correct uh, the method for evaluation of median nerve, ulnar nerve by different tests, the single muscle power thing situations, the card test, the book test, the pad and the app test, adduction, abduction, the androsious lumbricals, and see the position of the claw hand. That means extensor expansion, the weakness of the ulnar, clawing of the hand. So all these things are evaluation by inspection and selected tests. So that is a motor evaluation. The second one is the sensory. How is the sensory? There are three patterns of sensory involvement. The track type when there is a parenchymal. The root type, all of us know the, the picture of the dermatomal distribution, the C5, C6, C7, C8, T1, like that the root type of a sensory loss, where all the modalities are lost in a particular topography. There is a second group, peripheral nerve type of sensory loss. That is, you know, the one and a half finger of the ulna, this three and a half of the median, the radial. So that pattern of the sensory loss, where all the modalities are lost, indicate peripheral nerve type. And the third type, most important, uh, is in this case so important when there is a bilateral small muscle involvement, is hypothenathin or wasting bilaterally, is the track type of sensory loss where pain and touch are involved in a manner bilateral in the hands, but the sensations of the other areas, trunk and below, are normal. So that indicate parenchymal type of the involvement. So the explanation of this thing in this case is when in the spinal cord, imagine the CAT1 lesion, the involvement in this case is like this. The, uh, the center and here the root, the central root, you, you, you know the, if it is a, a something from within enlarging. There are two types. Can be compression from outside where sequential involvement of the tracks from one side will be occurring. Something intrinsic lesions occurring from within the paragema progressively tracks will be involved from within outside. So if there is a dilatation here, syringomyelia, First thing will be affected the crossing fiber. See, the pain and touch fibers coming from the posterior is crossing just in front of the central canal. The other side also will be crossing like this. So what will be the thing? It's a pain and temperature of that segment will be lost. When it is increasing a little more, wider and wider, you will get uh, involvement of the anterior horn cells which are here in the anti horn cell, anti horn cell here is involved, anti horn cell here is involved. Then what will happen? You will get the weakness of the small muscles if it is a CAT1. Further increase in the size will lead to what? The compression or involvement of the, this is a corticospinal lateral. So this is going down and crossing of the opposite side. You will get an opposite side weakness in the lower limbs. Then still further increase you will get the spinothalamic tract. It is going, causing and ascending up, spinothalamic. That means opposite side pain and temperature below the level. So initially the same level only bilaterally. Then 
depending upon the extension the lower level also will be loss of pain and temperature and the weakness also will be there so everything can be explained by the gradually progressively increasing from the within the cord so so what are the evaluation to be done you need to check the power sensations in the upper limb decide about the topography and the modalities the next one is examine the lower limbs for the torn reflexes to see whether there is a involvement of corticospinal spinal tract then about the sensations sensations again tract type of sensation that is pain and temperature affected but the other modalities normal if there is a still further increase there can be posterior cord sensation loss also but it should be very large one very important point in the evaluation which can it need to be checked is in the cat1 lesion there can be an involvement of the the this horn and the, the spinal the this is the autonomic system you can get a horner syndrome always check the pupils and the partial ptosis also so there comes the evaluation in this case i i, I have shown the uh, mri also mri showed a dilatation of the spinal cord starting from almost c2 up to c7 there is a serring here there is a doubtful herniation of this uh, tonsils into it so you can expect uh, if it is significant it can also lead to corticospinal involvement so when the assessment of the gait you can get a combination of significant uh, umn sign either due to this only or severe extensive large serigomalial that we also you can get a corticospinal uh, 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 signs this is another image this is the coronal section showing this thing so that's how you evaluate in this case it was basically involvement due to serigomalia the arnold sheary malformation was uh, not that significant it was uh, uh, radiologists also may not be agreeing to that significant thing there was uh, not much of involvement in the long tract the science human science uh, were not the thank you